Morning, City Church. Good How are we doing? Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Yes, welcome to Sunday Across the City. Welcome to Church Online, Church on Facebook Live. It's so good to have you with us this morning. Yep, it's great. You are so, so welcome to City Church this morning. Um, it's really, really good to have you with us. Please, please share this video. There have been loads of people sharing this video online, which is brilliant. Let's get some other people joining us. Invite your friends and your family into what we're doing this morning. Please, we, you know, a big part of what we're doing is the live Facebook experience. So if you're watching this live, please comment, like, give us some hearts, give us some thumbs up. We love all that. And even though we're all kind of stuck in our homes still, you know, this is church. We're gathered together. So please, please engage. Please don't sit and observe church this morning. Please be part of what we're doing. Worship, pray, join in, interact with us. That'd be great. Yeah, a particular uh, warm welcome to you. Maybe you're joining us for the first time online this morning or you're not a regular part of our City Church family. It's so good to have you with us. It's really great that you've joined us this morning. We believe you are going to have a fantastic time. Yeah. So it was really good last week to hear about um, where you're all joining us from, from across the, the city, across the UK and across the world. That yeah, was really cool. Amazing. We've, we've already had some people saying hello from Nigeria and South Wales this morning. So a big hello if you're joining us. We want to hear more of that. We want to hear more of where you're joining us from. So please comment. We also thought we'd hear from you this morning. Like, What kind of vibe have you got set up? Where are you joining us from in your house? Are you in the, the living room? Are you on a phone are you in bed are you in a tent the brambles were in a tent last night we saw on facebook they've been sleeping in a tent brambles are you still in the tent or you moved into the house are you yeah. are we on a big screen are we on your tv yeah and do we do look we, good do we look okay that's can you, see you know the, can you see the greys <laughs> on the big screen i don't Ouch. know if we're big screen ready james absolutely i'm not sure i'm prepared for that yes get commenting on that we want to hear where you're coming from like around the world around the city around the country but also kind of where you're watching us from in your your house. It's weird to think that we're like in people's houses on little it's, screens, a big screen. It's very weird. weird. Yeah. But please keep it to yourself if you're watching from the bathroom, because that is <laughs> at best quite disturbing. No one's going to be. At, at worst. <laughs> very disturbing yeah. so keep that to yourself also of course we like to change a few things behind us mm. on our shelves any spot the difference People is this week we might have some spring flowers up but we're not we've not got any flowers we're we have got two good, things they're a bit obscure aren't they yeah to spot the differences for you this morning absolutely so we've got a great morning lined up for you all today. Just as usual, we're going to be together for about an hour. Um, as always, we've got the fabulous Mr. Ken Riley. Woo! Leading we love you, Ken. Today. I hope you're not in your pajamas. He won't be. He won't be. James asked Ken to do a particularly uh, difficult song this week, I think, didn't you, didn't you, James? I yeah, think. we'll see how he gets on yeah, with that one. I think you all can a pint, he said after this, <laughs> after all the work he's put in this week. I think we all all can a pint for serving us so well in worship. Um, we've got some exciting news to share with you about what's coming up um, next week in City Church. And we've also got a, a, a cool video for you about how all of our City Church families are getting on with um, their kids and homeschooling kids during this season. Season, and we're going to pray for them together that's going to be so good we we really us parents who are homeschooling our kids really really need your prayers amen yeah. sister <laughs> As, don't say that. As always, our our kids are downstairs. We're all a bit on eggshells as to whether we, we might get disturbed. They're, they're reading and praying and um, doing some maths. No, they're not. They are watching the telly and stuff in their faces as usual. So who knows how that's going to work out. Yeah, and then a little bit later on, I'm going to be bringing a message, which I'm really excited about. We're continuing in our Unshakable Hope message series. And it's a message all about how Jesus can use the storm, can turn the storm into a moment of life-changing encounter with him. So we're really excited mm. about that. And part of the reason we want you to share this with friends and family is we believe this whole service, and in particular that message, is going to speak to people in this challenging season mm. we find ourselves in. Yeah. And... As always, there are some great kids' resources available for under-11s. We've loved using the resources that our 
our fantastic kids team have prepared mm, for us. Amazing. They're so such good quality stuff and really, really help all our kind of under 11s to engage with God in their own way this time. So um, we've shared the links on Facebook, but you can go to our swanky website, city-church.co.uk forward slash kids activities, and you can get them from there if you've not picked them up on Facebook. Um, so big hello to all the kids if you're a kid, if you're under 11 and you're watching and you're doing your kids' activities, bless you. We love you. Give us a like. Give us a thumbs up, kids, if you're watching us. And we hope you're having a great morning as well. Yeah, absolutely. And as well as a big hello to all our kids, hello to all the teenagers, young people, young adults youth. watching. The youth, yeah, the youth of today. They're doing all right, you know. They get a lot of stick, the youth of today. But I think they're fantastic. <laughs> Apparently this week they had a bit of a bake-off challenge. So check these out. Yeah. Hopefully, you'll be able to see that. This is just a selection of what they've been making. So on the left, we've got Faith's brownies with orange zest, bay leaves and almonds. That is fancy for, yeah. for the youth. That's amazing. In the middle, we've got Anya's cinnamon and Nutella cake. Wow. And I believe the winner is that one on the right, Ruby's smarty decorated red velvet cake. <sighs> amazing. How did they, how nice one, guys. So that was the winner. So they judge. How did you judge without tasting, though, guys? Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it didn't, but it could have tasted yeah. terrible. It could have and just been a cardboard cutout, just decorate with Smarties. Who yeah, knows? and it could no. Hopefully, no soggy bottoms. <laughs> hopefully, we're all right on no that. No soggy front. bottoms in the youth. Don't worry. <laughs> right. <laughs> awesome. So. Um, uh, we, we're, losing our, we're losing our way because of that soggy bottom comment. Our young people have various <laughs> things going on, including a Zoom youth night. And if you want to find out more about what's happening for our young people, you can send an email to youth at city-church.co.uk. Anyway, Sarah, so where are people joining us from? In the house, around the country? Anybody getting the spot, the differences? Right. Right, we we have got some spot the different spotters. So, who someone spotted? Was it David? Has spotted the infinity gauntlet? Yes, this is in honour of the parents at home homeschooling. Yeah, the Thanos Infinity Gauntlet from Marvel Avengers. Yes, come on. Um and Julia. Who, who got who got the other one? Julia spotted that this um, microscope. <laughs> <laughs> may have property of Crampton Learning Village <laughs> written on it. Science on, <laughs> in action in on, the Shepherd on House. On loan from my school. Excellent. We've got where have we got people from from Derbyshire. Derbyshire, awesome. Welcome from um, the original Washington DC, Washington Durham County. <laughs> wow, yeah, I like that Washington DC, Washington Durham County. Uh, we're on the kitchen table. Um, we're in the living room watching you we're on, the, on the kitchen table. <laughs> wow. Louis Spence. Louis Spence is on the kitchen table. <laughs> <laughs> the roses are watching us in the living room while Imogen is dressed as Elsa. Hello, yes. Imogen. Morning. I'm sure you look beautiful. Yes. But maybe we should. Uh, if dress you up guys next. aren't happy about the fact she's dressed as Elsa, you've got to let it go. Come on. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. Come on. <laughs> wow. Tom Norrington's. Oh, we're on, our, we're on his big TV. Gate said massive, TV. I know. We're on Wester eye. Hope, Seg Hill. New Zealand. New Zealand, Molly, hi. Great to have you with us. In a conservatory, Jez Mondo. Jez Mondo, Joe Hart, <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Chilling in bed with a cup of tea, oh, nice. Wish I was in bed with a cup of tea. Zambia, we're still... Zambia. Excellent. That's so good, that's so good. Excellent. Great to have you with us, everybody. Yeah. So we're going to we're going to move into um a time of worship now. So big welcome. We're so glad you're all here. Hopefully you've all kind of got settled. You've all got yourselves into a place where you've you're free of distractions, you know, all the phones are switched off, all the devices are switched off because it's really good now to kind of to focus our attention on Jesus. We're here to worship Jesus this morning. Amen. And you know, we believe that we you know, we can meet with the living God this morning. We believe that God is alive, that God is moving across the city, across our world, and he wants to, to meet with you. And when we meet with God, everything changes. And we're so, we're so aware that wherever you're coming from this morning, we all come with our kind of different situations, don't we? Some people are, are doing fine. Some people are full of joy. Some people are, are struggling. Some people are, are burdened. And before we worship Jesus, why don't we just, we thought it'd be quite good to just spend a bit of time just quieting our hearts before God 
you know, in the Bible, I was reading this morning in Psalm 24, it talks about lifting up our heads and opening uh, the gates of our lives so that the King of glory can enter in. Mm. That's that's our God. And I believe this morning that the King of glory wants to enter into your life. The King of glory wants to come and meet you where you are in your circumstances and change things for you. So just before we worship, why don't we just spend a couple of a couple of seconds now? You might want to just open your hand, hands out. You might want to close your eyes. You might want to just quieten things down in your home and just prepare and prepare yourself to meet with God. You know, you might be doing this as somebody who's like, you know, I'm not sure if God exists. Why don't you just spend a couple of minutes now just thinking, just praying, you know, God, if you're out there, will you come and will you come and meet with me this morning? Mm. Why don't we just do that together? Just a couple of seconds of quiet. Yeah, so Jesus, we say you're worthy. Mm. We say we want to meet with you. We say you're wonderful. We say you're majestic. We say come into our lives. We say we lift up our heads. Mm. We open up the gates. We say king of glory, come in. We've come to worship you, the one who died and rose again, the one who has made a way for us. We've come to celebrate you this morning, Lord Jesus. Let's do that together. Let's worship him. Good morning, everybody. Shall we stand? Shall we sing? Is not God great? Why don't we join with our friends and our families, maybe even across the internet, to lift up our praise to our God today? Come on, come all who are weary, come all who are burdened, come all who are stressed out by our situation. Let's praise the Lord, come on. Oh, come all who are weary, come all who are heavy burdened, lift up the name of the Lord. He's coming on the clouds, kings and kingdoms will bow down. And every chain will break, his broken hearts declare his praise. Who can stop the Lord?
lift up the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord singing over your battle? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. We bow the knee before you this morning. We say you are our king. You are our savior. You are the lion and the lamb. We look to you alone, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Great. Thank you, Ken. So good. So good. You're getting a, a little comment on your tan as well there, Ken, as well. I've been studying Looking in, good. in Whitley Bay. Also, shout out. I missed you before, but Jessica is dressed as Princess Jasmine this morning. Hello, Jessica. We saw, we sh- yeah, it'd be good to good see effort. some pictures of these kids dressed up doing their kids' church activities as well. That's fab. And a couple more people got the Infinity Gauntlet. Isaac, well done. You spotted it. And uh, Beth Bray. Yeah, as a mum of two boys, get used to a lot of this paraphernalia around your house as well you know we we love these sunday mornings these sundays across the city it's a real kind of highlight for us and um, getting to connect with so many of you over facebook they're really really precious moments but there are so many other ways across the week that you can connect with us as a church family so if you're only dipping in on a sunday morning uh, please listen up to our next kind of family news video and for loads more ways that you can connect in with city church so we're going to hear from one of our pastors tom now about some of the exciting things happening this week. Hey everyone, it's Tom here with your City Church family news for the week ahead. We've got loads of amazing stuff happening through the week. Every week, Monday to Friday, we've got live devotions on our Facebook page, followed by a prayer on Zoom together. We've got loads of great new drop-ins for you to get involved in. All our city groups are online. And a couple of things coming up this week. We've got a half night of prayer on Thursday, on Zoom starting at eight o'clock and a quiz again on Friday starting at half past seven. All the links for this stuff is on our website. You can just click the link and get straight into those rooms, into those groups, into those drop-ins. It's dead easy. So a couple of weeks ago, we shared about our partner organization, Action Foundation, and the work they do with asylum seekers and particularly their crisis appeal that they have launched in the light of this crisis. So, so far in just under two weeks, they've raised over 10,000 pounds to help support the vulnerable people they do. It'd be amazing if you could get behind that as well. If you haven't looked at what they're doing, how you can get involved, please consider donating to them, giving your time to them. You can find out loads more information on their website. That's actionfoundation.org.uk. Earlier this week, we launched our online Alpha course. Now, if you don't know about it, Alpha is an amazing place to explore the big questions of life, stuff around meaning, purpose, and exploring aspects of the Christian faith. Let's take a look at this quick video to find out more about what Alpha's like. So unfortunately we can't meet and have food together this time around. Our Alpha is running online through Zoom. It launched this week. It's not too late to get involved in that. It's run by a great group of people here at City Church. And Alpha runs on Thursday nights from half past seven, usually taking around an hour. 
All the links for that are on our website. Great, well that's all for me for today. Thank you so much for listening. As I've mentioned before, the best place to find any more information on what we're doing at the moment is on our website. You can get the links to go straight into the prayer rooms, straight into the quiz, all that kind of stuff. Just head to our website for that. Please also be sure to keep up to date with our Facebook page as well. We're posting stuff on there through the week with other things coming up. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great rest of the Sunday. See you later. So good, so good to hear about all the incredible things happening across the life of the church. Look, as Tom said, check out our website for more information about everything he shared about and so much more besides. Look, I look at the week ahead and it's just action packed. There's healing prayer tonight if you need prayer for healing of any kind. All those devotionals and Zoom prayer every morning. Alpha on Thursday night, that special prayer night we're going to have on Thursday night. The quiz on Friday night. It's all happening, isn't it? Busy. I know. It's really busy. And let's, um, you know, let's just give some props to Tom and to Dan as well. They've been, like, give them a thumbs up, give them some hearts. They've been working so hard behind the scenes to make everything so clear for us and easy for us to engage with in this season. The website's fantastic. Everything they've been doing on Facebook is so good. And this week, they've even started a YouTube page for us. So we're on YouTube, City Tube. We're going to be like YouTubers, James. Like, okay. Influencers. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> hashtag influencers so we can't stream directly to, to YouTube but all of the, the videos and the Sunday gatherings they're all going to be up there um, after the event so if you miss any of that you can head to our YouTube page and um, catch up I wondered what you were going to say when you said give props to Tom because through most of that family news she was just commenting on how good you look Tom I know so. you're looking fresh in this season Tom I just think I feel like lockdown's aged me and James <laughs> whereas it's been kind got, to Mr Norrington it has been kind to you Hey, uh, (laughs) let's move on from that quickly. Let's talk about homeschooling and having the kids at home for a moment. We've got three boys at home with us, haven't we, Sarah? Yeah, if you don't know, we've got three boys. We've got Noah, um, who's seven, Seth, who's five, and Jude, who's two. And um, so we're we're attempting to do some kind of schoolwork with, with the older two, with Noah and Seth, during the week. It's 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 hard. It's hard, especially yeah. when they're all different ages and they've all got different needs, and they all demand your attention all the time. Um, I'm taking the lion's share of the homeschooling, so I'm doing like Monday to Thursday while James is working, and then Friday is like Dad's homeschooling day where I'll do some work. Yeah, and. And I really struggle to think of anything creative or fun to do with them. So on a Friday, when we're at a bit of a loose end, I'm struggling to keep all three of them engaged. Friday afternoon, I just give them a bath for like two hours. But but to make it sound more educational, I don't call it having a bath. I call it aquatic. I'm sure it's on the syllabus somewhere. Absolutely. It's aquatics. Fast and loose with the curriculum. There, it's aquatics with dad on Friday yeah. afternoon. Yeah, it's so awesome. The boys think like dad's homeschooling day is epic, and then obviously mum has to do all the actual <laughs> maths and English. I do some maths and English. You did the solar system this week. Yeah, you we got, we, you got yeah, right into that. that. You when... channeled your small geeky eight-year-old oh, took self. Took me back to days when the moons of Jupiter were my only friends. <laughs> Pull yourself together. (laughs) Anyway, this week we asked some of our parents and carers, James, in the church with kids at home who are doing some homeschooling to give us a little bit of an insight on how that's going for them, what's going well and what are the challenges, just so we can all kind of feel like we're in this together a little bit and and pray for each other as well. So um, Dan has put together a little video for us and we're just going to have a look at that now. Enjoy. Hills. I'm Ross and this is Sally. We've got Jessica who's almost seven and Elijah who's three. The best thing about lockdown for us is being able to spend a lot more quality time together as a family. One of the worst things must be getting asked for snacks 20 times before breakfast time. And that's just me. My name's Matt 
and I'm Bethan and we have Sophie who's nine and Jessica who's six. What I've really loved about homeschooling is having the opportunity to see what the kids are doing in school. I'm enjoying having more time with the girls without the busyness of normal life. Hi, I'm Ellen, I'm mum to Freya, Leaf and Fen, who are all under six. They are a handful, but they are very, very entertaining. Homeschooling, I'm not a fan, but I'm learning patience on levels that I never previously had, which is good. And if I continue to focus on how funny I find them, I think I will view the whole experience as a positive. Hi, it's Catherine here. Mum to Leroy who's 16 and Rai who's 9. We've been having lots of fun inventing new ball games in the garden and baking. We're in this for the long haul as we're shielding Leroy who's got complex health needs and it's actually pretty tough as a single mum trying to meet the needs of two disabled children who have very very differing needs but trying to make the best of this time together. Hi we're Joel and Lucy Smith. We have four boys, uh, Malachi who's six, Baraz who turns five on Wednesday, Ezekiel who's two and another one that's due June, July time. Um, we've been really enjoying spending more time with the boys but the introverts in our family are starting to struggle a little. Hello everyone, I'm Phil um, I'm currently homeschooling my children Annabelle age five and Caleb age four. I have no idea what I'm doing. Really good fun, there have been meltdowns, but I would never have had this time with my kids if I was at work, so in a backhanded way, it's a real blessing. Hi, I'm Lizzie, and I'm mum to Esme, who's eight, Annie, who's five, and Isaac, who's just turned three, and we are home 24 seven. And uh, the kids are getting on really well together, which is really beautiful at the moment but it is challenging in that they all want 100% of my attention all the time. Hi, my name's Rachel. My son is James, he's just turned six, and I'm loving having James at home more often. The challenge is not having any headspace. As a single mum, this is my breather. In Morrison's car park, just about to go in and do the shop. I'm May. Hi, I'm Joanna. I'm a medical student and Jonah works full time for Action Foundation and as an interpreter so we're used to living life at high speed. This time's been a great opportunity for us to just slow down and enjoy spending time with each other, the good and the not so good. Hi I'm Sarah, I'm married to Chris and we've got two kids, Izzy age 7 and Zach age 3. We are enjoying spending time together as a family. One thing that we're finding a little challenging is Chris and I are both working from home at the moment so trying to do that is a little bit more tricky. Hi City Church, this is homeschooling from the Pew household. Science lesson, turning brown hair blue. <laughs> awesome, that was so good. Thank you so much to everyone who contributed to that video. And, you know, thank you to everyone, whether you did or not who is homeschooling and looking after kids at home in this unusual season we find ourselves in. Hey, we're going to pray for you guys, for us, for everyone doing that right now. So I'm going to pray. I'm going to lead us in that. But why don't you on, on, on Facebook just lift up your own prayers as well, type something in or pray at home for these people. Lord God, we thank you so much for the gift of family, for the gift of children, that you welcome children, Lord Jesus, that they have a special place in your heart, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the honour as parents and as carers that we have to mould the lives of young people, Lord. And we recognise the unique privilege and challenge of that in this season. Thank you that you're using this season to bring families closer together. But we also want to recognise, Lord, that it's hard we say, come and strengthen weary parents, Lord. Come and refresh them. Come and fill them with fresh joy, fresh compassion, with perseverance. And come and draw near to our children as well, Lord. Help them process this season and draw near to you like never before in this season. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. 
And on that note, Sarah, you probably better go and check that ours haven't yeah. completely trashed the house. Yeah, it's been very quiet, and that's never a Ominously. good thing, is it? Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna worship together again now, and then James is gonna be sharing um, his message as we continue in our series, Unshakable Hope, Finding Jesus in Troubled Times, and how Jesus can turn the storms of life into a moment of encounter with Him. So let's worship now. Lord God, we come before you. We know, Lord, that you're with us in this strange situation, Lord. We know that you stand with us, that you're beside us, God. For those who are maybe on their own today, Lord, be their present help. Lord, we may be locked down, but we're looking up and praying for miracles, God. Come, Lord Jesus, we pray.
the still stands Great is your faithfulness Faithfulness I'm still in your hands This is my confidence You've never failed You promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Yes, we come before a mountain-moving God this morning. We believe, we trust in you, Lord Jesus. We say, come and do it again. Come and move in our lives and in our world, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, I am so excited that you're here on Sundays across the city, and I'm so excited to share this message with you this morning, because I really believe This is a morning where Jesus is inviting us into a place of encounter with him. You know, Jesus specializes in turning the storms of life into moments when we encounter him. Moments when we meet with Jesus. And when we meet with Jesus, everything changes. So are you guys up? for an encounter with Jesus this morning. I hope so. And in fitting with my rather pathetic attempt at homeschooling, where I pass off giving the kids a bath as part of the syllabus, it's all about aquatics, guys, the story I want to share with you this morning, story from the Bible, the place we're going to encounter Jesus has a bit of an aquatic theme. If you want to check out this story for yourself, follow along with me. You want to go to Matthew chapter 14. We're going to be starting at verse 22. But let me just set the scene. Jesus and his disciples have been really busy. Jesus' ministry is in full flow. He's been working in the region around the Sea of Galilee, which is actually a big lake rather than a sea. He's been teaching. He's been healing. He's been performing miracles. He's just fed thousands of people with some loaves and fish. And crowds of people are following him. It's really intense. And just like us, Jesus is human. Yes, he's the son of God. He's not like us in every way, but he is human and he needs time to be by himself and recharge and connect with his father, connect with God. So he says to his disciples, look, you guys go on ahead of me by boat across the lake to the next place we're going. I'm going to spend some time by myself. I'm going to spend some time with God and I'll catch up with you later. And we read that the disciples set off across the lake. It's night time, which might sound a bit strange to you, but actually this was really familiar territory to them. They were mostly experienced fishermen and they'd normally do their fishing at night on the Sea of Galilee. So traveling across the lake at night was just a really normal thing for them to be doing. But at some point going across the lake, the weather takes a turn for the worse. This is what it says in verse 24 of Matthew, of Matthew chapter 14. It says, The boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by waves because the wind was against it. They're a long way from the safety of land. They're being buffeted by the waves. The wind is against them and Jesus is nowhere to be seen. Doesn't that feel a little bit like the season we find ourselves in today? 
We're a long way from land. We're a long way from the security of life as we knew it. And we don't know how long this season will last. We're buffeted by waves, waves of loss, waves of sickness, waves of uncertainty, waves of stress and fear and loneliness. The wind is against us and we don't know where Jesus is in the midst of it all. But Jesus is about to turn this storm into a moment of life-changing encounter with him. This is what happens next. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. I love that. It's so matter of fact. Yeah, Jesus came walking on the lake over to them. What of it? Jesus, the son of God, the one through whom and by whom and for whom all things were created, the one who is sovereign over the wind and the waves, comes walking towards them across the lake. The disciples can't quite make out it's him. And it says that they were terrified. They they think it's a ghost. I love that. These hardened fishermen, they're scared of a ghost. That would so be me in that situation. You know, to be fair to them, what else are you supposed to think if you see some figure walking across the lake amidst the spray and the waves and the wind of a storm? And then we read, Jesus says to them this, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Jesus is drawing near to us today. And he's saying, take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Jesus turns the storm, a moment of fear, a moment of wind and waves of feeling a long way from security into a moment of life changing encounter with him. It's been amazing to hear story after story after story. And and the numbers watching this live stream reflect this of how God is using, Jesus is using the storm of this season to draw people into life-changing encounter with him. I love it. And he wants to do that this morning. And then Peter, one of the disciples, one of the people in the boat, speaks up. I love Peter. He's just this passionate, radical, all-in, speaks-before-he-thinks kind of guy. And Peter says this, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Lord, if it's you, tell me to come to you on the water. Peter wants to be with Jesus. Peter knows there's something amazing about Jesus. You know, at this stage in the gospel story, in the account of Jesus's life that we have in the Bible, Peter hasn't actually put all the pieces together yet. He hasn't figured it all out exactly who Jesus is and what it means and what the implications are. But Peter wants to be with Jesus. He wants to do the things Jesus does. He wants to be in this life of wholehearted adventure with Jesus. He knows that even on a stormy sea, far from shore, wind and waves against you, the best place to be is right alongside Jesus. And then this amazing moment, Peter's asked this outrageous, crazy question. If it's you, tell me to tell me to come to you on the water. And Jesus says, come. Jesus says to Peter, come. Jesus invites Peter and Jesus invites you today out of the boat and onto the waves with him into a place of adventure and encounter and life with Jesus. Jesus turns the storm into a moment of life-changing encounter with him. And you know, I'm really aware that I'm talking to some people today, some of you engaging with this, who've walked with Jesus for a while now, maybe years, maybe decades. And perhaps, if you're honest, your relationship with Jesus has plateaued, has settled. Maybe the passion you had at first has faded. Maybe the things of this life have crowded in and taken away some of that joy and that life that you had in Jesus. It happens, doesn't it? 
God is using the storm of this season to call you out again onto the waves with him, to call you into a place of adventure and faith and risk and obedience. There is more for you. There is more for us, City Church. Where we've been content, where you've been content with sitting in the boat, Jesus is calling you out onto the water with him. There's more of his spirit. There's more of his presence. There's more of his goodness. There's more of his potential in you. And as well as those for whom Jesus is calling you again out of the boat, I also know that I'm talking this morning to some people and you're not sure you've ever had that moment where you respond to the call of Jesus. You respond to the come, the come to me of Jesus you're not sure you've ever done that. You know, maybe you recognize the storm of this season. You'd be crazy not to, hey? Maybe you're even seeing something of Jesus in this season. If you're engaging with us online, I, I expect that you are. You felt a sense of Jesus saying to you, take courage. Don't be afraid. You've experienced something of his love and his peace and his comfort in your life. That's so good. But you know what? There's more. And the scary thing is Jesus will never be content with you having that kind of distant sitting in the boat and watching relationship with him. And today he's calling you out. He's saying, come, come and find life in all its fullness with me. I am the son of God. I am Lord. I am king. Come. He's pursuing you. He's coming after you in his love and in his goodness. He's the one who leaves the 99 to go after the one. That's why I believe you're listening to this message right now. Jesus is drawing near to you and he's saying, come. Let's go back to the story for a moment. You know, Peter, I love Peter. He actually does it. He gets out of the boat and he starts walking on the water towards Jesus. And he's doing great. Because with Jesus, all things are possible and he's keeping his eyes fixed on Jesus and he's walking on the water with him. But then in verse 30, it says this about Peter. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. This is so true of my life. I don't know if it is of yours. You know, when I keep my eyes fixed on Jesus, I'm okay. You know, it's not that there aren't storms when you're living life with your eyes fixed on Jesus. There are always storms and there certainly are in this season. But when I keep my eyes fixed on Jesus, I don't sink. In fact, when we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, it's better than just not sinking. We experience the blessing and adventure and goodness and miracles of God right in the midst of the storm. But when we start to look at the wind and the waves, we start to sink. When we start to look at what's happening in the world around us and let that dominate our feelings and our thinking, we start to sink. When we start to look within at our own weakness and at our own failings and our own sin, we start to sink. But when we look at Jesus, we walk on the water with him. You know, maybe you feel like you're sinking a bit this morning. I've had moments in this last week where joking aside, with the kids at home and the challenges of this season, I felt like I'm sinking. The invitation of Jesus to come is an invitation to you where he's holding out his hand and he's saying, take your eyes off yourself and your failures. Take your eyes off what's happening in the world around you and fix your eyes on me. Look to me. Because this is what happens next in the story. Immediately. Jesus reached out his hand to Peter, reaches out his hand to us and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? Jesus always reaches out and catches us. There's a little challenge in that verse as well, isn't there? Jesus says, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? You know, Jesus can be direct sometimes, but when I read that and when I sense that, I don't think he's saying it in a stern way. I think it's a gentle voice. You have little faith. Why did you doubt? 
I'm finding this season is a real season of self-reflection for me. A season which in a really gentle and loving way, Jesus is saying to me, you have little faith. Why do you doubt? He's pointing out areas in my life where I lack faith, areas where I doubt, areas where I look at the wind, uh, when I look at the world around me, when I look to myself for strength instead of to Jesus. And he's highlighting those things in the way Jesus does. And it can be a bit painful, but in a really loving way, he's reaching out his hand again to me and he's saying, come on, James, come back to me. Come back to life with your eyes totally fixed on me. Come back out on the waves with me. He's using the storms to bring me to a place of life-changing encounter with him. Then Jesus and Peter climb back into the boat and the wind dies down and the story ends. The last verse I want to show you, the story ends like this. Then those who were in the boat, the disciples who were there and Peter, worshipped him, worshipped Jesus, saying, truly, you are the son of God. The story ends with this moment of revelation for Peter and for the other disciples in the boat where they realize, whoa, Jesus is so much more than we thought he was. Jesus is one who is to be worshipped. Jesus is one who is the son of God. And if you study and understand the meaning of that phrase in scripture, it's just a way of saying he is God. He is God in human form. He is God come to us, not just a great teacher, not just someone who can give us comfort and courage and love and peace, not just a miracle worker. He's all that, but he's so much more. He's God. He's to be worshipped. He's one to be in awe of and to put right at the center of our lives as Lord. Jesus is using the storm to draw us into life-changing encounter with him. Guys, Jesus is saying to you today, come. And you know when Jesus says come, it's a call that requires a response. It's a call that requires us to do something. We can't just do nothing with the invitation of Jesus this morning. And he's inviting us this morning to simply say yes to say yes to him, to say yes to getting out of the boat with him. You know, for many of us, as I mentioned before, Jesus is calling us to say yes again. He's using this storm to draw us into a moment where we say yes again to Jesus. We've known Jesus, but this is a moment to put him first again, to take risks for him again to make him Lord again, to experience more of him again, to be sold out and wholehearted and radical for Jesus again, to rekindle those dreams God put on our hearts maybe years ago again. Some of you have dreams and vision for your life with God and it's laid dormant for too long. Jesus says, come, will you say yes? It's time to get out of the boat. There is more. Will you say yes to Jesus again today? And there are those for whom this call of Jesus to come and this invitation to say yes is a bit of a first time thing this morning. You know, you're not sure you've ever said yes to Jesus. You know, in this season, it's like you're in this story. You've been glimpsing from the boat something of Jesus from afar. You've been engaging with him. You've been engaging with us online. You've encountered something of the reality and love and peace and comfort of Jesus. In your own way, it's a bit like you've been asking Peter's question. Lord, if it's you, if this is real, tell me to come to you on the water. If this is a decision I need to make, if this is something I need to do, tell me to come to you. Today, he says, come. He's inviting you into a life of adventure. He's inviting you into life-changing encounter with him. Will you say yes? There is a cost because it's a moment where we recognize our own failings, where we recognize we need that salvation. Jesus has won for us at the cross. It's a moment where we say, Jesus, you are now Lord of my life. There is cost and there is risk because I don't think Peter was 100% certain when he stepped out of that boat it was going to work. 
for all of us, there comes a moment where we don't quite have it all squared away yet. We don't quite have all the answers. We're not sure 100% stepping out of the boat is a good idea. But we know enough and we take that step of faith. It's a moment of cost. It's a moment of risk. But it's a moment where our lives are forever changed. When we step into the life we, we were created for, a life with Jesus. I believe some of you are going to step out of the boat again. And I believe some of you are going to step out of the boat for the first time this morning and say yes to Jesus. So look, we're going to sing together now, but we're not just going to sing a song. This is going to be a holy moment between you and between God where you say yes to Jesus, whether it's, an, whether it's a, a yes again or whether it's a yes for the first time. Guys, I'm saying yes to Jesus today. And I'm going to ask you to do something brave, actually. As I pray now and as we begin to worship, if like me, you want to say yes to Jesus, I want to invite you to type a comment into our live stream and just simply type as we begin to pray, as we worship, simply type, I say yes, Jesus. Whether it's for the thousandth time, whether it's for the first time, as a way of responding, as a way of stepping out of the boat and making this real. Just type that prayer, simple prayer. I say, yes, Jesus, as I begin to pray now and as we worship him together. Let's pray. Jesus, I say yes. I say yes to life with you. I say yes to getting out of the boat. I say yes to adventure and obedience and risk and faith and big dreams for you, Lord God. Thank you that you give us courage in the storm. Thank you that you save us when we're drowning. Thank you that you call us out onto the waves with you. We say yes, Lord Jesus. And as we worship now, Lord Jesus, I pray by your Holy Spirit, you would come into each life and each home and bring transformation and bring encounter with you, Lord Jesus. We say yes, Lord Jesus. So guys, we're going to worship him together. Let's lift up, let's type those I say yes, Jesus prayers on Facebook Live as we do that. Let's worship him together.
oceans rise, my soul will rest in your embrace. I am yours, and you are mine. You are mine. Sorry about that. <laughs> Technical problems. I just want to talk for a moment to those of you who are saying yes for the first time today. And I want to invite you to pray with me. You know, you might not have all the answers. You know, the truth is you never will. But you know that you know enough. You believe Jesus lived and died and rose again. You believe in him his forgiveness for you you believe in him his fullness of life you believe and glimpse something of him as the son of God and you believe this might be a moment to make him Lord in your life this is a moment to step out of the boat to say yes to Jesus we all come to that moment where we can no longer be an observer where we can no longer sit in the boat that moment when Jesus says come and when we say yes so I just want to show you a simple prayer we're going to pray together. We're going to pray and we're going to say yes to Jesus. We're going to declare him the Son of God. We're going to declare him Lord, the one who lived and died and rose again, that we might have forgiveness and life. We're going to step out of the boat. So let's pray this together. I'm going to pray a line. Why don't you repeat it after me if you want to say yes to Jesus for the first time. Repeat after me. Jesus, I say yes. I say yes, you are the Son of God. I say yes, you lived and died and rose again. I say yes to forgiveness of sins. I say yes to eternal life. I say yes to making you Lord. I say yes to being filled with your Spirit. I say yes to a life of adventure with you. I say yes, Jesus. Amen. 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 Hey, if you've prayed that prayer for the first time today, and if I didn't have to hold this microphone right now, I would be applauding you for doing that. And I'd be applauding you, all those people who are saying yes to Jesus today, whether it's for the first time or for the thousandth time. It's so good when we say yes to Jesus. Hey, you know what? This part of our time together is going to draw to a close now. But your Sunday morning experience does not have to end here. In fact, we've got two Zoom events, two Zoom rooms happening right now as we finish this meeting. We've got our Q&A lounge and we've got our ministry room. And I want to encourage you. In fact, I want to challenge you. If you've said yes to Jesus this morning, whether you've made a first time commitment to him or whether you've made a recommitment, I want you to head to our ministry Zoom room as we finish, to our ministry Zoom room, because we have an amazing ministry team there who are ready to pray for you, who are ready to help you discern what the next steps are for you on this amazing adventure you've stepped into with Jesus. I know it's scary moving from the anonymity of watching me on Facebook into a Zoom meeting where you can see people and where you can be seen. But you know what? If you said yes to Jesus today, you've done the hard part. Maybe that joining that Zoom call today is a way for you to make real the decision you've already made in your heart.
So that's the ministry Zoom room. Get yourself over there if you've said yes to Jesus in a significant way today for the first, first time or whether you're doing that again as a sign of getting out of the boat for Jesus. And then we've also got the Q&A room. And in there, one of our pastors is going to be leading a time of just connecting with one, other, one another, hanging out and exploring the question, how can I know God is really there? How can I know God is really there? If you want to explore that some more, get yourself over to that Zoom room. It's so easy to get into these Zoom spaces. If you head to our website, you click on the Church Across the City menu, go to groups, and there are links to these two happening now and to all the other kind of Zoom spaces that happen through the week as well. We'll also put something up on our Facebook page for you to link straight into those Zoom rooms. Hey, we've got so much happening this week. We've got the quiz, we've got groups. We've got daily prayer stuff. We've got healing prayer tonight. We've got our special evening of prayer on Thursday. And just a particular reminder, Thursday night we've got Alpha. If you've got questions, if you want to explore what it is to follow Jesus some more in a really great context, why don't you join our Alpha Zoom on Thursday night? You will not regret it. Hey, it's been so good to do church online with you all today. God bless you. Have a great week. Get yourself onto Zoom for those Q&A and ministry Zoom room now. Keep saying yes to Jesus this week. Lots of love to you all. See you next time. Bye-bye.